Hey everybody, welcome back to College welcome Time Session with me, Rick. And me, Naeem. And we have a very special guest here today because of all the things that have been going on in the world right now, especially this, uh, this uh, hating on, on Asians. And you know me, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. Um, we reached out to the Asian community and we found this very lovely young lady who, if you've been paying attention to the news, she's right in the front line of everything. This is Liana Louie. She is the front line of everything. She is the front line of everything, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was just amazing, uh, the things that we saw. You know, every time I'm watching TV or even on Facebook, I see you walking around the streets in Chinatown, yes. just, just monitoring. I, yes. I'm just so blown away by that. Yeah, so we started um, patrolling San Francisco Chinatown last year in March 2020 uh, because of all these things that have been happening from the COVID yeah. uh, rhetoric, which is really, you know, it's really bad. It's not, even though it's called Chinese virus mm -hmm. or yeah. Wuhan virus, whatever, it doesn't just affect Chinese people. We have yeah. seen <coughs> Filipinos get their face slashed. We've seen. Really? Oh, yeah, one in New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I mean, uh, the, the Thai guy who was pushed to death, uh, yeah, that one Grandpa Vichar, I've done two rallies for him already, wow. supporting his family. Yeah. And uh, in Oakland, in Oakland, there was um, so many attacks in Oakland, Chinatown. There's a lot of theft there and, and physical attacks. It's just not just the com Chinese community. It affects everybody. So Thai, wow. Vietnamese, there's two Vietnamese ladies. They were punched. Their face is completely bruised up. Um, right. Actually, my friend Jerry, he, he was punched in the face and he lost a molar. Jeez. There's just so many victims and it's just it's wow. just incredible. It takes a lot of force to lose the teeth. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I asked my dentist, really, realistically, how far? She says, no, it takes a tremendous yeah, amount like of force. Yeah, like you would have to like want to hurt somebody to do oh, that yeah. kind you of damage, You have to right? put your whole body, body weight away, into right? it. Yeah. You know, it, it, wow. it, it doesn't seem to amaze me how the rhetoric that's going around is always, always wrong. Yeah. You know, they, these people coming, oh, you did this. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> that was in China somewhere. You know, scientists messed up or whatever happened. Yeah. I had nothing to do with that, but yeah, just because I look like that. And then the bad part is, it's not just, like you said, it's not just the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's anybody who looks Asian. Yep. They could be Mexican and look Asian. Yep. I know a few. You know, and, 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 and it just boggles the mind. And, and a lot of this to it, and, and I had said this in a segment that we did on, on uh, Naeem Shorts, mm -hmm. I said that this has become an excuse for somebody to mug somebody. Yes. Oh, you're Chinese. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, let me have your wallet and your phone and whatever else. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just <laughs> clarify that actually nobody really knows, not even the scientists, they don't know where it came from. Ex because there Wuhan is actually the largest airport in China. Right. Every single airplane that goes to China in any destination, say if you want to go to Beijing or Guangzhou or Shanghai, you have to go through Wuhan to transfer to those bigger cities. It's right. a hub. So it's a hub. So everybody flies to Wuhan and then they get transferred elsewhere. So as far as as far as anybody's concerned, it could have came from Europe, it could have came from Africa, it could have came from Australia, and, and it could have came from anywhere. Isn't it? And, then, and then to have the ex-president jump up there and, and say, from China the, the stuff wrong. that he, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to get political, mm -hmm. but yeah, as an, just as an individual, mm -hmm. what an idiot thing to say on television. Of course. That's yeah. just idiotic. I mean, yeah. you know, if you don't know, you don't know. Don't start saying it just because you're trying to get ratings. Right. It well, was plus just it already had a name. His name was yeah. Coronavirus. Right. right. So why are you renaming it to some, you know, another nation? Right. And, and particularly since especially since Chinese Americans have already been historically bullied, oh, have yes, been discriminated, yes. we have been beat, we it's have been, been mugged, road. we have been lynched. We, uh, the biggest lynching of Americans is yeah. Chinese Americans. Yes. Back in the 1800s, uh, yeah. uh, early 1900s, railroad workers, yeah. yeah. of course. Yeah. That's the yes. biggest lynching in the history of America. Yeah. So, and, and people wow. don't even care about those things. Yep. But then they, we, we're also not taught those things either. Yeah. We're not taught yeah, that. It's not, in the, it's not in the history books. Yeah, that is one of the biggest uh, problems and biggest beef I have with the school districts is I grew up in the San Francisco school district in mm -hmm. the 80s and I did not learn about any of this at yes. all. But I, because I am born in China and when I came here, 
I'm very active with my parents who uh, are active with the family associations. Okay. Uh, we talk about it a lot. And right. plus my, my, both my parents were teachers in China. So, oh, cool. you know, so they, and they teach history. And my father, he actually writes a, a genealogy book. So we talk about these things a lot. So it, it runs wow. really deep in my did family. Did you go to school in San Francisco? I did. I Where did. at? I went to Spring Valley Elementary School, Marina Middle School, and Mission High School. Mission Wait, High, Mission High School? Yeah, yeah. High School. Seriously? Yeah. Mission hey, High School. Hey. Bears! Who <laughs> bears? bears? What what year did you get out of there? 1990. I didn't know you. <laughs> I was out in 80, in 82. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, Diana and, and uh, her sister, mm -hmm. Mary, yeah. knew them. They also went to... Yeah, they went to Miss High School. But they're even younger. I think she was class of 85. No, she... Uh, well, Mary was on her way in as I was going out. I mean, no, not Mary. Oh, uh, Diana. Okay. Mary was there. Oh, uh, okay, I okay. There. Yeah. I, I thought they were... Uh, a few years behind me. But no, it was funny because when I asked uh, Diana, oh, do you remember? He goes, he goes, yeah, you know, just like your picture from ROTC. I said, okay, you do remember me. <laughs> oh, wow. No, he doesn't. Hey, folks, no. by the way, we want we <laughs> wanted to um, apologize for everybody who was expecting to see our good friend Jay uh, Pagal. Uh, we had to um, change the whole format. I lost my, my information on the phone that we had his stuff on, and I do apologize, but we are going to get him back, so yes. please... Bear with We're us. Working on that. Um, but since this has come up, and all of you guys know my passion for things, mm. um, this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. You know, when one of the first, uh, one of the first few victims that I had heard about was a gentleman in uh, Daly City, mm -hmm. and he was Filipino, just yeah. minding his own business, standing in front of his house. Yes. Some guy ran up on him and just, you know, I'm like, okay, this has got to be, this is ridiculous. So I, I decided it, and then I had to ask Naeem. Naeem do you mind if I jump in and do these things because this is important to me? And he was like, you know, and, and I appreciate that he's like, dude, I see his passion for you. You do whatever you need. And here we are. And I'm, I'm so there. glad that you jumped in here because I think it's important, one, to get the word out to everybody. Absolutely. You know, and then secondly, what do you do when you're in those situations? You know, I, I teach martial arts, as you know, um, and we're offering, again, we're going to keep offering that until nobody wants to come. Uh, we're having free classes <laughs> to anybody. That's who, a great sales who, pitch. You know, <laughs> I know. Um, until you tell us to go away. Yeah, until you tell us to go away, <laughs> we'll be here. Uh, and again, that's all of the Bay Area. I mean, all of our friends, all of our, our masters that we know who Opening have been on doors, our show yeah. okay. have offered their service. Hey, yeah, let us know when we're whatever you want and, and we're there. So thank you guys out there for, for helping us. So tell us, what are you folks doing as far as the physical aspects of are you telling people to fight back or? Yeah, well, we have a lot of safety tips. I'll just start with uh, general safety tips and I'll go into what our members do. Mm -hmm. So for general safety tips, uh, we prefer that you don't go out alone. Good. Try to go out with a, another person or two or three other people because usually the criminals, they look for the lone wolf. If you are yep. walking by yourself, you're looking at your cell phone, you're not making eye contact, you will be a target. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, that's tip number one. And then uh, number two, always have your phone ready to record if something's about to happen. Right. So whether it's going to be happening to you or somebody else, you know, don't be a bystander. Be an oh, upstander. thank you for saying Be that. an upstanding citizen. Yeah. Help other people. Yes. You see somebody getting beat, record, say something. Hey, just say, yeah. hey, what are you doing? Yeah. That can actually change Stop everything. Them, right? yeah. You know, yeah. I was on uh, Channel 7 with uh, Kristen. Mm -hmm. uh, they invited me on, and I and I talked to Sarah, saying that I, I was telling her, I said, you know, if you're sitting there recording, there's 20 other people, put your phone down and help the person. Yeah. You yeah, know, stop exactly. being part of the problem and be a helpful solution by yanking that guy off of whoever it is yeah. and help. I mean, For you sure. already have 20 people recording it. They don't need 21. Exactly. <laughs> you know, put your phone down. Yeah, there was an incident in New York a few months ago where... Um, where a, a Asian man was, he was getting beat, just beat and beat and beat, and there was like 40 people just recording and nobody's helping. It's ridiculous. And, and I was like, oh my God, how I wish I was there. You know, right. I mean, at the least we can, I, I don't, I'm not that strong. I'm, I'm about 130 pounds, oh, you know, versus a 200, yeah. 250 pound guy. I'm not gonna do very well. I'll probably get really hurt. So, But the fact but that you, you know wanna what? get up and do something uh, is, but is the- I carry this thing. with me, you know? I, I put it in your face. You, you just showed me something that I hate. I'm going to tell you <laughs> why. Uh, being a martial artist, uh -huh. and, and I've been doing security work uh -huh. 
uh-huh. for the last almost 40 years. Okay. And I and in, in during my um, in our uh, martial arts class, we have a rape prevention class that we teach. Mm. And one of the things that I always tell the women is not to use mace. And I'll tell you why. Unless you're trained and you do it on a regular basis, yeah. that mace can actually blow into your face or sure. in a panic while you're scared, oh my God, oh my God. Right, right. And you have you to become, practice it for sure. Thank so, you. That's what I'm trying to get so out to these people that they need to you work. practice. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't, don't carry it because yeah. in your panic while you're freaking out, like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. And if you have to dig for it in your bag or your purse. Yeah. Forget it, it's yeah. too late. But no, in that situation, it makes sense though, because yeah. she would be the bystander that yeah. would be. Yeah, if you're not directly involved, exactly. but again, I try to tell people, you know, like tasers, mm-hmm. if that gets taken away from you, now you're just helping me. Yeah, guy. exactly. Yeah. So in in our regular, um, so we do offer uh, pepper spray training. We have a pepper spray gel, which doesn't blow back in your oh, face. Cool. It doesn't sprinkle. Uh-huh. It's like a straight shot. And then Good. and once it, it sticks to your face a lot. Oh, okay. So it doesn't just spray, it just completely sticks to your face. And then so when you, if you just touch it, or if you, you don't touch it, in a few <laughs> seconds, you start feeling it. Because yeah. it goes into and, a and where do you get this? Yeah. Where do you get this? Oh, well, actually, uh, my fiance sells it. So oh, if, nice. if you guys need some, you can <laughs> there, do it. It's a good plug-in. Plug it's a good plug-in. <laughs> get, get a new number. <laughs> So we'll for, the for, for, for gym members, it's ten dollars. <laughs> for non gym members, it's fifteen dollars. Oh, I love, it. I love <laughs> this moment. We're gonna put that yeah, information yeah. up just, just so I can give you a call. No, but yeah, that, that's, for that's sure. are you selling that out of a store or? Uh, we have it in, in a couple of stores, but okay. we yeah we, we actually I think we're running out, so I gotta restock Re-order soon. Restock. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> yeah, people you know actually when I do sell them, uh-huh. I always tell them just give me five minutes of your time. I'm going to use good. my practice spray. I'm going to show you how to do it and I'm going to let you take it and then I want to see you do it. So, yeah. you know. Because a lot of people yeah. don't know what they're getting into when they're, they're using a new device. Yes, you exactly. Know? I mean, False it's the worst. Yeah. They think, oh, I have this, but have you ever used it? No, but I have. Well, then that's useless. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's like having a gun and not know how to use it. You're going to shoot everything but the... <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. If um, We don't carry weapons while we're out there, but, yeah. but if... You know, if other people, I know like the, the uh, I think they're called like brownies. Yeah. Or uh, they're like Girl Scouts. They, I saw their uniform. They have like a machete <laughs> and oh a freaking and these like, are the nine millimeter. Some <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. They're, they're called, um, no, they're, they wear like a brown uniform. Okay, yeah. They're kind of like, like the, uh, they're kind of like the, um, the Guardian Angels. Yeah, they're yeah. like Guardian Angels. Yeah. They had like big old machete yeah. and a, a gun and all that stuff. I was like, whoa, you guys are serious. Like, you know, so what we do, I, I just, uh, so, yeah, so for safety tips, right? Go out in pairs mm-hmm. or more and then having something uh, with you like to record and right. then also right. maybe a pepper spray or something you can use right. to actually, you know, keep the perpetrator from hurting you. And I know some people, uh, they're trained to put keys in, in their, between their hands and, right. and used to just, you know, if you just poke somebody a little bit, it's enough pain for you to just run, you know, if right. you can't run. So, um, yeah, those are the safety things. And also, like, <coughs> look around you. Like, a lot of people, they're not aware of their surroundings. That is very dangerous, especially for women. Like, you know, there's so many rape cases. Yeah, You know, definitely. there's like a, a rape, a rape, feed and rape, and it's just... It's just so heartbreaking yeah, to see all of that seconds. on the news. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So it's, you know, we have to not just go, oh, I'll be fine by myself. I don't need anybody's help. Yeah. I, and I've, I've seen a lot of those attitudes. Yeah. And, and people think that they're invincible. Guess what? You know what? When something really do happen to you and you can't react, then you you will be humble. It's a rude awakening. Yeah. It is a very rude, very awakening. rude awakening. And, and you know, like I said, we, we give classes. And, and I tell you, the, the women that come to the classes, they want to be proactive and once we start telling the stories and showing them things and they're like oh my god i would have never been able to do any of those things if i didn't come to this you know i right. thought i thought it was easier than that because no it's not that easy yeah you have to yeah. practice like with yeah. anything like i i spent 11 years in the army uh, oh, after i graduated really? from high school wow yeah nice. yeah so i joined army when i was 18 so uh, uh combat training you know <coughs> all the basic stuff that we have to learn you are um, incredibly unassuming <laughs> so, yeah. so besides the hand-to-hand com- de- combat, we do train on weapons mm-hmm. and, and other, you know, my new weapons. hero. <laughs> so, um, you know, we practice it all the time, and we always say that you know what—the only way you're gonna get good at something is if you train, 
train and train. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's like, like our weapons qualifications, we have to qualify every six months. Right. Our physical fitness, we have to pass a physical fitness exam every six months. But, but really, like, everybody needs to be, you know, working out every day. If you yeah. can even do 10, 15 minutes a day, whether it's walking or running or push-ups or sit-ups or jumping jacks, whatever it is, you have to keep moving your muscles. And not only that, you have to keep moving your brains as well. You have to be aware, aware of your surroundings all the time. Yeah. But not only that, but also uh, to make connections with people, to talk to people. Yeah, yes. I, I think that's important too, is to learn how to be a community this again. rather than this. Yeah. You know, that's a big difference. I mean, yeah. somebody who's walking like this is less likely to get bothered than right. the one who's doing this, kind of clutching their bag or, right. and walking around like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, the criminals are like sharks. When they smell blood, they want to bite. Yeah. So if they see you're scared, they want to go Oh, they're going to go after. Yeah, so, that's the one they're going to go actually, after. Actually, um, yeah. it's the one in the back of the herd, the lifting yeah. one. Yeah. Like, I mean, my, my, my mom, bless her heart, she's in heaven right now, but she was beaten mud three times. Because oh. she's, she's always kind of like, have that, you know, I'm so scared that. Yeah. And, and actually, because she's so scared, I'm afraid that's the reason why she actually would target it. She doesn't yeah. make eye contact with them. She's just kind of like, you know, let me just get home, you know. And she was beaten mud three times uh, after she got off the bus, but she never told us until the third time when I saw her at <coughs> home. She had a, a split up lip with yeah. all blood, and then she had a big old bump on her head. And I said, What happened to your mom? And she said, she said, uh, uh, nothing. I just, I just bumped into something. Oh. I said, I said, Mom, you don't bump into something and get a, you know, a yeah. split up lip with blood and, and, and a big bump old bump on the head. head. Yeah. Like that usually doesn't happen. So I, I kept pestering her until she finally told me. She goes, she goes, okay, I was beat and I was robbed. Like, I was like, wow. Well, 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 <laughs> is that? Is that something cultural? Like, what's the reasoning behind not yeah. speaking you out hear that about a lot. that? Yeah. That's definitely. I think in our culture. Like yeah. I, I don't know. Are, are, what's your? I, I'm Filipino. Okay, so I'm I'm not really sure how the Filipino culture. Filipinos is like, are not what like, they will. St oh, they are will they scream. more more uh, yeah, outgoing, they, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They, they'll they, say something while it's happening. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll start. But <laughs> I I would say that like typically in the Chinese culture, people are more quiet. Uh, you know, and we even have songs that glorify being quiet and oh, humble my. and stuff like that. So you know, it's. Time it's to change of, the culture a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and I, you know, that's one thing that I kind of had a problem with growing up, especially when I found out what happened to my mom. Uh -huh. um, I just told her, I said, Mom, you can never go out alone again, you know, and she was already retirement age. I said, you know what, you need to just retire. It's right. not like we need your salary to right. pay right. for mortgage or anything like that. So, and I mean, she was... She wasn't even making that much. Live at a little wage. It's kind of like this for her too. Just something to yeah. do. Yeah. So I get it. Which are you know if you're gonna go out, let us one of us know. And you if you have to go somewhere, you don't want us around. Just have us pick you up and drop you, you off. You know it, it's interesting that you say that because I, I've heard of some organizations who are willing to, to walk around with people. Yeah. Who who did you give a call? They'll send somebody over. And, yep. and they'll, they'll, they'll walk around with you and go wherever you want to go. Really? Now, do you know of any of those organizations? Yeah, so um, uh, Compassion <laughs> in Oakland is, is doing that. They yeah. have like, uh, when I, I went to the onboarding. I think they had like almost 300 people on, do the onboarding. Wow. So uh, I'm not sure what their availability is, but right. I imagine that if you have that many volunteers, you could probably cover a, a wide range of oh, time yeah. frames. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you for all those numbers later on, yeah. so we're going to post Say it all on the okay. screen. Yeah. Just because I think it's so cool that there are people out there, you know, who want to help like you're doing. I mean, they, yeah. you know, you've had enough. Something needs to be done. And God damn it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We're not hearing enough about the, the people that are helping. Yeah. yeah. So we I hear the try. aftermath of, you know, somebody getting hurt or yeah. attacked. But that's, you know, that's clickbait. That's, you know, yeah. what, what sells the drama. But exactly. we're not hearing about the positive that's coming from this. Yeah, the people yeah. who are We out actually, helping. UPC, we offer uh, escort service too. And we have done uh, quite Now, what's a few UPC? Oh, so it's a United Peace Collaborative. Okay. So I'm the founder of United Peace Collaborative. And we started uh, forming uh, last March. And we became official 501c3 in uh, July. Oh, wow. So we do have a federal employer's ID number. Mm -hmm. So anybody wants to make donations to help us, I will give you the information later <laughs> on. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, hey, we're, we're going to let you pitch whatever you want to pitch. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> so you just keep doing it. This information is important. We, we need yeah. to know that we can reach out to people and even help, support. Yeah. That would be great. Like, if anybody who's already trained in martial arts or... You know, you don't even have to be trained to do what we do. So I just, right. 
that I'll just briefly talk about what we do. So <laughs> our members get a two-hour uh, two free orientation. Uh, we talk about our protocols and policies and then, you know, chain of command, which I, I'm, I can't wait till somebody steps up to take my job. <laughs> uh, so, so I can like, take a little break because I, I haven't slept in a while. <laughs> yeah, dude, I see you out there every night. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm watching your Facebook and I'm just amazed. I'm yeah. like... Holy cow, this lady's, I mean, from morning till night, I see you on the thing. Yeah, if we're, if we're not patrolling, we're, we're going to meetings with other organizations to get people to go out to rallies and marches. So it's yeah. like, it's like 24 hours a day, it's nonstop. Dude, she's on beast mode, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Like, I mean, like I if you don't have a passion day. for it, you can't do this kind of stuff. That's true. You know, like yeah. we've, we've tried to, you know, get more people more involved, but it's, it's like, tough. Yeah, people yeah. see it, but they're also, a lot of people are kind of scared, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna get my face out there, you know, that they could find make me a target, there. which, you know, when I first started, I was like, I kind of thought about that too. Then I thought to myself, you know what? We are gonna live one life and one way or another, we're gonna die. So nobody's gonna get out of this world alive anyways. No. So no. I'm gonna do what I'm passionate about. I'm gonna do what I, I enjoy doing. <laughs> I, I, like I love that people. about you. I mean, like I said, there aren't enough people like you. You know, you don't hear the stories of these incredible people, let alone being a woman, who want to stand up against that bully or that predator who decided that I'm going to make you, you know, cower under me because I'm bigger and badder than you are. No, we, we need to stop that. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, you look at me and I'm just this old Filipino guy and I'm all banged up. But when I see something, I'm like, no, I'm going to stand up. I want to be with these people who are going to put themselves. And when I saw you, you know, because Diane said, oh, yeah, there's this lady by the name, blah, blah, blah. And so I looked you up and I'm looking at this. And I'm like, OK, if she can do it. I'm, I'm right beside her. Absolutely. And that's I'm why just... I reached out to you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just a little woman, and uh, I really believe that everybody can do it. As long as yeah. you set your heart to doing something, you can do it, for sure. And if we come together, that's... Yeah, we'll strength, be even stronger. Strength, strength in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I'm noticing those rallies. Mm -hmm. You're right there in the thick of things. How are you able to get that many people to respond? Well, I think a lot of them, like you, uh, once they see what I'm doing on Facebook, they, they go, well, let me go check it out, you know? So actually the first, so I've been attending other people's rallies, supporting them. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, there were some that I really thought was right on message, but there were some that were kind of like skirting around what's happening. And I really don't like that. So I just thought to myself, I have to have rallies where our message gets sent across. So what is that message? Let's do it here. Because so, yes. I, I want to make sure that you got, this is your platform. Anything you want to say, we want to put it out there. We want to get the right information out. Because like you said, I have heard other things. And I'm thinking, okay, that's just idiotic. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen some of those. And I'm like, wow, that's not Like you said, he's unencumbered when he says things too. Yeah, I, I just speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no problem. So, you know... Uh, it's very, very clear to me what's what's happened. There's a, been a lot of attacks on Asians, particularly elders and women. You know, there's just so much here in San Francisco, in Oakland, even now in Atlanta. We just heard recently in New York. It's just, it's just crazy. So first of all, the first thing we need to do is identify it. We right. have to say what it is for what it is. Right. You know, who did what <coughs> to who? Who's right. the perpetrator and who's the victim? So. Let me just say that there's all kinds of perpetrators. They come in all colors, and most of them do have criminal backgrounds.